Hey folks, welcome to Bear Mountain today. We are gonna be planting some of our extra sweet peas. We got everything set up in the tunnel perfect, and we had extra sweet peas that have been growing on in these pots for about a month, uh, longer than maybe we should have. So we decided, hey, let's put it out someplace in the landscape so that we can look at these things during the course of the early part of the summer. So this is what we're gonna do. We we'll show you what these guys look like after they've been growing in the pots and how we're gonna put them in and space them. These guys were sown back on the first week of January and they haven't really been pinched at all. There's a few weeds in each of these guys, but um, they still, these were all extras that we had. It's just a variety of different colors. Uh, we've got from pastels to, I think there's some uh, pinks in here as well as maybe a couple of blues, but they're mostly on the lighter side of colors. And we put uh, these guys transplanted into the tunnel that we're gonna raise on the cordon method for um, cuts. We put those guys in the tunnel, what, about a month and a half ago, I think. And they're doing fine. They're starting to grow up on the central leader, looking really good. So these guys, what we're gonna do though, is we're gonna put these at the base of uh, an old livestock fence. It's on the edge of our property and kind of let them grow uh, somewhat wild in a sense. So we're not gonna pinch them back to any kind of you know specific type cordon type thing. We may trim them up to keep them looking nice, but the idea would be is these guys are gonna naturalize into the fence itself and kind of provide a background of color around the front of our property. So how we plant. We're gonna do the same method that we did when we put them in the tunnel. We're gonna inoculate them in. We've got our uh, leaf mold soil and we're gonna inoculate that. So we're just got this big, huge mortar tub. Now, some folks have asked you, say, where do you get a tub like this? And actually, these tubs are sold by most um, hardware or home center type places. And what they're used for is for mixing like a uh, plaster or drywall or uh, small amounts of mortar or something of like that. I think they're called um, mortar. Um, actually, that, that's in their name. It's kind of like a mortar tub. Where do you find this, man? Uh, yeah, it's in usually where you go is you go find some place that's selling, you know, where the cement is sold, you know, which is kind of um, usually tucked in the back. We've got a couple of those that are really Yeah, you, and you can get them different sizes. This is probably one of the larger ones. I think it's, um, I'm not sure what the gallon on it, size of it is, but it's probably like 18, 15, 18 gallons. And then there are smaller ones too, you know, 10 or something like that. So depending on what you want to do. Um, I'm using this one today because it's big enough that I can set this entire crate of, um, I got 31 uh, sweet pea plants here. So once I get this kind of mixed up with water, I can set this guy in here and let these guys soak for about three to five minutes to get them nice and moist. So we'll fill this up, we'll soak them, and then uh, we're gonna line them out. We'll show you how we're gonna do this. We're gonna space these guys pretty far apart too, so they'll have lots of room to grow. So let's get it filled up and then get them soaked. I want to I want to fill this tub up about probably halfway at least uh, to get them because uh, these pots are pretty deep they're they're probably like six inches deep so I want to make sure that the water is up more than halfway up the side of the pot it takes a while to fill a big tub some folks may ask, well, how much, how much of that leaf mold soil do you put in? And it's not really scientific. It's more like a, what I try to do is for a tub this size, I'd use like a, cap, a coffee can full. And that's probably more than enough. And if you're doing a lot of plantings, it'd be good enough for most of the day. If you needed to put more water in, you just kind of put more water in. The whole idea is to get some of that biology from the soil you know, into the uh, potting mix and around the roots of the plant. Eh, that's probably deep enough. 
So what's ever left, what do you do with it? Uh, I just pour it around the base of the plant. So like when we get finished up, uh, the last thing I'll do is just, uh, you know, after they've kind of been uh, set in place is to, I'll just dispose of it by just watering around the top, uh, like around the base of the plants. problem with too many? No, too no. This stuff is really benign in a sense. It's just a generalized mix of, of good biology that, you know, is growing at that interface between the, the soil and, the, and where the decomposed uh, leaves are and things. And since this was around hazelnuts, I also get the benefit of getting some hazelnut shells in there too. So we just set this in the water, make sure it's nice and set. And the water itself is up to more than halfway up the side of the plant. So what I'm going to do is just let these guys just kind of wick it up for about, well, these are pretty good sized plants, so uh, pots. So I'll probably just let it go for about five minutes. If I was doing like a plug tray, I only do plug trays maybe about three minutes uh, before I pull them out. Okay, these guys have soaked now for about five minutes and uh, I can feel a little dampness of the top, so it's starting to wick up to the top. So these guys are pretty much ready to go. Uh, so the next step is we're gonna lay these guys out. Now, if we were raising these for cuts like we did in our tunnel, we spaced these guys like uh, nine inches apart um, because we were training because we were training them to a, a single uh, cordon. And in this case, what we're trying to do is go for like a mass fill. So we're gonna put these plants uh, like about two feet apart so that they have multiple branches and they will go up onto the actual wire of the fence and kind of fill in uh, hopefully more laterally than up. That's kind of the goal here is to fill the fence. So. This 30 plants should give us almost uh, 60 feet of, of fence coverage. And we're gonna start right back behind our compost pile. We'll talk about that when we get to the end of the video. It's kind of an interesting experiment, but I digress. Anyway, we're gonna start over here by, uh, we got a little, what's the, what's the name of that plant we put in years ago? <laughs> it's like a, a relative of a Dusty Miller. Um, but um, it's a perennial and it kind of blooms like about in June and then, then sort of kind of dies back a bit. But we're gonna start about two to three feet away from that and then go up two feet or so each one and that should take us out. So the first step is we just gotta lay these guys out. Actually, get them untangled here. One of the things that we'll do, since these were never pinched, is one of the things that we're going to want to do is is just go through and take out um, the beginning this was the leader from the one the thing uh, sprouted and we should take that guy out which is right here i was pointing to the wrong one and so we'll make certain that we take out that weak um, central stem so then this is what we're left with uh, a good a good plant and we'll space these guys out like I said and then we'll dig them in now so let's get that part done get them cleaned up and get them put in to the spot where we're gonna want to dig them in that one maybe I've only got 30 plants that one didn't look very good Fence or our fence? It's kind of a joint fence. Depends on when it needs to be repaired. <laughs> <laughs> we asked him if he did. Yeah, he was good with it. Family would mind, and they said no. Okay. Yeah, they 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 actually have some uh, wild sweet peas growing on the other side, and so. It'd be kind of interesting. So now here's a classic example of it trying to grow on the original stem, and it's very skinny compared to the other guys and it's probably pretty weak, so I'm just gonna cut that out. So now I'm left with a good strong leader here, another one starting, and a second one there. So. 
Typically, we'd plant these way closer. Yeah, like I said, we're trying to put them like two feet apart. So, so we don't have to deal with them. Yeah. And, and if any, any pruning that we do with these guys is going to be uh, more for the, the idea of if, the, if we just can't shape it back into the fence. Um, so if it like starts to make a run for the yard or, or, or into our neighbors too far. Um, How are we going to water them? Um, I've got drip line, main line just about 20 feet away. So what I thought I would do is I'd run a half inch um, line over here and then I can run a micro line um, going kind of both ways. So um, you can use these quarter inch micro lines for like 25, 30 feet with no problems. And so if I do like a, a line in and then kind of have it go 25, 30 feet both ways and we can cover the 60 foot with no problems. So then when we water the boxes, these guys will get watered too. Probably though for the first um, week or so until they're pretty well established, I'm just going to come out and hand water them. All right, we got them all lined out here. The uh, entire length of this fence is about 60 feet and they fit pretty much perfect. Um, they're about two feet each apart, maybe a little, little more, a little less, depending on what I kind of run into. I've got some old stumps up on one part of it, so I kind of had to kind of jockey things around. So the next step on this, this soil is all loosened up um, because it was kind of compacted next to the fence here. And we removed uh, any weeds or anything like that to kind of give these guys a, a good head start. So what we're gonna do is just dig them in. Um, I'm gonna plant them basically up to the top or the stem. And, and then after we get finished planting them, we'll um, water them in and probably gonna have to hand water these guys again like I said for probably about a week or so till they're established so I can tell. Um, one of the things to note here is like when I take this off notice how easy the pot slides and that's because it was all wetted down. We have really good root development. Doesn't look like it's jammed in there too bad so these guys are all they're going to do really well, I think. And we'll just go through and do all 30 of them. It's not the best soil in the world, but this is all kind of an experiment anyway. Got some roots. I guess I didn't clean it out as well as I thought. I think it looks better than I thought it would be. Yeah, you know, actually, for soil, it really hasn't done anything except been stomped on. Well, it was also under a whole bunch of fir trees that... Yeah, for years. That didn't, you know... It See, like, this one's got anything. really good roots. So I got extra weeds on the top here. And we also don't know the variety. Yeah, These they're just all... just a mix. They're mixed. Some of them are mammoth. Some of them might be the anniversary or... Um, some I mean, of these are saved seeds. Yeah, some of them were saved seeds. Um, so it's all kind of a mix of things. It's going to be uh, like a box of chocolates. You're not going to know what you're going to get. But there's these. They'll be great no matter what. That's, that's my feeling. And it's a legume, so hey, what could be wrong, right? These are not too attractive to other animals, hopefully. We do have deer around here, so I guess we'll find out how bad uh, deer like to eat sweet peas. All parts are poisonous. Yeah, well, I've heard that stories before too, but deer are browsers and they tend to eat sample, it, sample things. Sample it and go, well, look, I don't like it, but you know, then they've already done the damage. Doesn't seem to harm them. <laughs> nope. So, you know, getting these things in isn't going to take too long. Should be done in about three or four days. No, just kidding. <laughs> nice roots. These guys really look good. They're nice and white and healthy. 
Did you do anything special to them? Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, how did I fertilize them? What did we do? I fertilize these guys once a week with uh, Jadam grass uh, liquid fertilizer. And uh, when we first transplanted them, we uh, put worm castings in the mix as well as um, a little worm tea on the first go around. But after that, um, these guys have been fertilized about every seven to 10 days with uh, Jadam liquid grass fertilizer. And it's really done a good job. Um, I mean, they all look real healthy. And I think, uh, I mean, that's great. It's free, you know, it's just free, 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 free. Anyway, we've done some videos on how to make that. So be sure to check those out if you have any questions about what, what I'm talking about here. And we're not going to spend a lot of time tying these up. We're going to nope. maybe come out and weave them through the fence. Yeah, once they get a little taller, you know, and the tendrils start coming out, we'll just kind of like, you know, make sure they kind of go help, through. But not spend time tying right. them up. And then kind of trim them. So like if they decide to want to go this way, but you can't do anything with it, we'll just trim that off. And also kind of keep an eye on the other side so my neighbor doesn't go nuts over that way too. And... When they get to the top, we'll probably just um, kind of train them, you know, as much as we can to fill in. And if things are filled in, then we'll just kind of top them again, not letting them, you know, try to go six feet out one way or another. So I think also, too, one of the last things is once um, I get it's all settled out, I'm going to either throw some cut grass over around the base to kind of keep the base of these guys cool. I want to keep the root systems cool. So once I get the irrigation line down, I'll probably throw some uh, mulch over the top to um, basically get it. So it's, um, you know, kind of keeping the, the roots and the whole thing kind of cool. Because this is out in open sun. So, you know, this is the other part of an experiment saying, well, how long will they go and how long will they look good? As long as we keep water on them. Yeah, I'm hoping that that's the case. Um, it does get a little windy out here sometimes too, so. It'll be interesting. Okay, let's get them all in. Okay, just as an add-on to our sweet pea project video, some folks may have seen this in the background and wondered, what the heck is it? Well, if you might recall, last summer in our um, daffodil boxes, we overplanted them with zinnias and marigolds. And uh, when the season was finished, we had a fair amount of refuse. And so what we did is um, we decided to make a compost pile out of this a little bit uh, out of the, not really ordinary. In a sense, there was already a fair amount of green in the uh, refuse from the uh, zinnias and the marigolds and a fair amount of browns because some of it had been frost damage and stuff of that nature. And so what we did is we built a pile here and the pile is actually shrunk tremendously. Uh, originally, when we got finished and we all had it, it was maybe about, uh, I don't know. It was to the top of the fence. It, yeah, it went to the top of the fence, which I guess at this point was about, what, about four feet? The thing is like, it was roughly about four feet by four feet by four feet. And that was in October. And so the October, uh, we're now in middle of April. So we got about six months into it. But one of the things I did after the first month, it kind of went through a little bit of a heat up, got up to about 100 degrees, and it wasn't really that rocking and rolling. I covered it with plastic to prevent it from being just sop and wet from rains over the winter time. But one of the things I did is once the temperature dropped down in this to about 80 degrees, um, I started inoculating it with worms from my worm bin. Um, they actually have been working on this really good for the last uh, probably up five months and the whole idea what I'm trying to get to behind this we'll take this and open it up and take a look at it is this was never turned okay so this is a one-time build it I built it kind of a you know with no wire frame or anything of that nature I just continued to like pack it pack it you know tight um, I alternated the layers of of anything that was maybe woody And so now what we're looking at, okay, so now what we're looking at is a compost pile that has been sitting here and it is chock full of worms. I mean, when I start looking at it, it's like, here's a bunch of them. They're trying to run away because it's pretty bright out here. Um, all these red wigglers, they're working it. 
and it still has a fair amount of sticks and stuff in it but you can just tell that that the material is changing like here's a beautiful red wiggler good look good looking guy gal actually it's two of them they're having they're making babies get back to work so we've got lots lots of work in here and this is all being done by the worms so i never turned this I've got a fair amount of ants in here too but they're just doing their thing and this will probably be ready for uh, spreading around um, the base of our when when our transplant our zinnias and our marigolds and again back out here on our overcrop of our daffodil beds and you can see the daffodils uh, what's left are really in full bloom right now some of them are finished but the late season ones are going and as you can see over planting them with zinnias or marigolds or anything like that did absolutely nothing as a matter of fact i think uh this year it actually um actually helped them the uh, we just had a real the, good year and the tulips were way more vigorous and lovely and prolific the um two boxes of anemones um they were eaten by deer at least twice yeah so, so they had that a hard I time have any um anemones going there is kind of surprising but it wasn't because something was planted there it was totally rabbits and deer and other kind of yeah i got hit once really really bad we really never really had problems with that this is the first year we've had problems with with something eating the anemones yeah uh, so we were kind of surprised and by that time the damage was done but they made a valiant effort on that one second yeah. box to to make a comeback but so they, it's not because we planted something over them uh the daffodils and the tulips really you know show that you can do that and get two crops off of it so right we'll be putting zinnias and other goodies out here again in uh, midsummer right so the compost pile this was a no work compost pile and as long as you got I figure this way I've got space and I've got time and I really don't enjoy turning compost any more than I need to and in this case there was actually no turns on this at all so I think my future on this is going to be hey I got leaves in here I got for carbon I had the greens for the marigolds and the zinnias and um, I just let it heat up a little bit made sure there's plenty of moisture in it controlled any kind of evaporation or saturation from the outside with plastic. I'm probably going to change this plastic out in any, any ones that do in the summertime and use the porous uh, landscape cloth. So that way I can just put a sprinkler over something every once in a while and make sure that you know it gets water in it. But this stuff will be um, ready to spread out in June and that's perfect. The only downside on it is it's at the front of my property. It's behind like, a big bush. I didn't like the fact we had black plastic things stuck behind out here. But why haul it somewhere when you're going to come back and use it there? Well, that was my that was my feeling on it is is like why not you know have this next next to where I'm going to be using it. And what's fascinating about it is, like I said, it started with something that was probably four foot by four foot by four foot, and now it's down to a third of the size, something Crazy. like that. So we'll just cover this back up, and then, you know, I just put sandbags on it to keep the plastic from blowing off. Like I said, we get a fair amount of wind up here, so. And occasionally we get strafed by planes. Okay, we got them all planted in and it took the entire length here, which is pretty good. It's kind of what we were going for. Uh, I think this is somewhere around 60, maybe I think we even got close to 70 feet uh, spacing these guys apart. And uh, they're gonna, I, I think they're gonna take off pretty good. The last step that we didn't do today, it's gonna to take a little bit longer because we gotta get some uh, connector parts for it is uh, getting the irrigation hooked up. So for right now, for the next week or so, we're just gonna hand water. And uh, these guys are probably gonna start climbing the fence here, some of them, I think, in the next probably week or so. We got some really nice weather ahead of us, so 
they should uh, you know adapt pretty well didn't see any transplant shock it's been a couple hours since you know we did the whole thing and uh, nothing wilted and so that's that's good too so we just wanted to show you a little project of something you could do with extra flowers that you might have um, way to you know bring a little beauty in the world and kind of have a little fun at the same time can't wait to see how pretty it'll look yeah i, I think it's going to look great i think so so thanks guys for joining us today and as always stay safe out there and we'll see you next time bye 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 bye